Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover today, including a very bleak outlook for the Pacific coastline near the U.S.-Canada border and south to Northern California. We'll get to our top story in a moment, but first let's come to spaceweathernews.com. And solar flaring has remained low due to sunspot inactivity on the Earth-facing disk. Plasma filaments are all over, and the one approaching center longitudes on the north is now feeding southward towards the equator. Eyes on them. Solar wind this morning is showing a simultaneous jolt to plasma speed and temperature. This is likely the co-rotating interaction region of the sector boundary. When the phi angle shifts later today, it will be followed by impact of the coronal hole stream. Auroral conditions should be good for a day or so after it hits. Let's also note the Jupiter conjunction coming in just three days, one of the highest amplitude variability periods each year. Eyes on that as well. There was an avalanche yesterday in Mongolia killed some climbers. The mountain was indeed off limits due to that danger, and it is the fourth deadly such event like that at the tourist location in the last 50 years. The officials have updated the great numbers, the constants of science. They do this every four years, and like always, the changes are minute and won't change much of anything, but they've said this is their last revision. They are close enough to correct for their purposes, I suppose, and they won't be seeking Veritas there anymore. Not sure I love the idea. New paper came out last night on the gamma ray energy excess in the cosmological surveys, especially galaxy clusters. They say that no existing model or theory on this excess can be explained by dark matter, and that was one of the last bastions of hope for it. Now to the top story. University of Washington has run the Juan de Fuca fault slips and thrusts and realized that the epicenter and direction of break are going to determine just about everything that happens when the big 9.0 finally strikes that area again. They happen every few hundred years, and the last one was back in 1700. Their models show how an earthquake almost directly beneath Seattle could actually be less damaging for them than if it was south on the line and the fault breaks towards land. But the differences, they admit, are very small. And in the understatement of the century, they say no such situation is rosy. It's only a matter of time, and the devastation would dwarf what happened in Japan in 2011. Geomagnetic effects, earthquake notifications, and the only direct emergency line the observers have to you in the worst case scenario, the Disaster Prediction app. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got the world wind maps coming up, null school, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.